Hello and welcome back to the organic chemistry topic. Today's lesson is lesson two is fractional distillation and we're going to learn how uh, some of the alkanes that we learned about last lesson are separated from crude oil. So the title of today's lesson is fractional distillation which obviously sounds very grand and we'll get to what that means in a second but by the end of today's lesson what you'll be able to do is identify some of the everyday names for the alkanes that are found in crude oil and you'll be able to describe and explain how that crude oil is separated into useful fractions that we can use in everyday life. Before we move on to fractional distillation though, let's make sure that we're clear on what we did last week. So a quick retrieval quiz, three questions on the screen, pause the video now and answer the three questions on your paper. Okay, how did you do? Do you need to watch video one before we move on? First question says, why is C2H4 a hydrocarbon but not an alkane? Well, it is a hydrocarbon because it contains carbon and hydrogen atoms, but it doesn't fit the pattern of CNH2N plus two, which all alkanes have to uh, fit. What are the names of the first four alkanes? Can you remember the cheats? Monkeys eat, peel bananas, methane, ethane, propane, and butane. And finally, an alkane has 23 carbon atoms, but how many hydrogens would it have? Well, the answer, if we apply that to the answer in question one, the CNH2N plus two, we would have to double 23 to get 46, and then add two to get 48. Well done if you got those right. If you were scratching around, or if you hadn't seen video one, you really could do with watching video one before we move on to the, the, this lesson. So what do we know about crude oil? Well, we know that it's a mixture of many different uh, compounds called alkanes. And using monkeys eat peel bananas, we know that the first four is methane, ethane, propane, and butane. But there are many more alkanes found in that mixture. And although you don't need to know their chemical names, you probably do need to recognize their everyday name. The first one we're gonna talk about is petrol. It's the one that is most recognizable. Now petrol is probably in a chain of about eight carbons. So whereas butane was C4, petrol would be C8. And I'm gonna represent that with a line of that length. That line there is eight carbons long. If you've got petrol in crude oil, you've also got diesel. So diesel is also an alkane. And diesel would be somewhere in the region of C16 to C20. The next compound that you would find is kerosene. Now kerosene is a fuel that you would use in a space rocket or in an aeroplane. And kerosene is somewhere in the region of C30. So the line would be longer than diesel. Now, if you combine methane, propane, uh, ethane, and butane together, you get a group of gases called liquid petroleum gases. So they're in the region of one to four carbon atoms. So I'm gonna draw a line for them, which is smaller than petrol, which is eight carbon long. Now, the final everyday name that we need to know is a, a name called bitumen. Now, bitumen is kind of like that horrible black tar substance, the substance you might use to fix a roof or the substance you might use when you're making a rod. And bitumen is around C40 to C45, and so it's a relatively long line. Now, although you don't need to know that information off by heart, that length is really, really important, and the relationship of that length is really, really important when we're talking about how you're going to separate them. I can't put my hand in the oil and pick out a piece of bitumen. I can't put my hand in the oil and pick out a piece of petrol. Can't separate it in that way. So there's going to have to be a chemical process. And that's what fractional distillation is. OK, so fractional distillation. Well, that separation occurs in something called an oil refinery. And you'll have heard of that term, but you may have never seen an oil refinery. For those of us in the northwest in Salford, Imagine you're going to Chester Zoo, you went down the motorway down towards Chester Zoo, and just before you get there and before you turn off, if you look on the right hand side, you would see a picture that looks very similar to the one on the screen now. And that is a picture of an oil refinery. And what happens is the crude oil that we bring into the country ends up in the oil refinery, and that's where fractional distillation occurs. So in those towers that you can see on the screen, that's where the, the substances like bitumen and petrol and diesel are actually separated from crude oil into something that's useful and can be used. 
So the crude oil goes into the oil refinery and out of the oil refinery comes the useful substances. So let me talk you through the process so that you at the end of this will be able to describe and explain how that crude oil, that horrible black liquid, is separated into those useful alkanes like petrol, diesel, etc. And it happens in the two pieces of equipment that you can see on the screen. First thing that the crude oil goes through is a boiler and then into the fractionating column is where the most important process of, um, takes place. So something you need to know about the fractionating column first is that there is a temperature gradient inside it. And what that means is the bottom of the column is extremely hot. And as you rise up that column, it gets cooler until of course at the top is the coolest part of the fractionating column. And that temperature gradient is the most important thing that is gonna allow us to explain how this crude oil is separated into the fractions. So the first thing that happens, and the first thing you need to be able to understand is that crude oil is actually a liquid and it enters the boiler. Now the boiler is a little bit like the boiler at home. So in your boiler at home, water enters the boiler and it's heated up. So on this occasion, it's crude oil that's the liquid that enters the boiler and it's heated up to a temperature of around 400 degrees. Now 400 degrees, is hot enough for the whole of that crude oil to vaporize. And what that means is the whole thing turns to a gas. So let's just pause for a second. Crude oil used to be a liquid and now we've turned the whole thing into a gas. Difficult to imagine, I know. If I ask you to, ha uh, to, to say what happens to hot gases, you probably tell me they're gonna rise. So if you think about it, the gas is now gonna make its way into the fractionating column and you would say that it's gonna rise up that column. And it does. Let's not get bogged down with the physics, but, the, but that hot gas, or those hot gases, those mixture of hot gases are going to rise up that column. But something else happens. And what happens is that the gases are going to condense. And they're going to condense, they're going to turn back into the liquid part. So we're going to get petrol as a liquid, we're going to get diesel as a liquid. But the most important thing is this those substances those alkanes are only going to condense when they find the right temperature so let's take it step by step the first substance that will condense is bitumen and i've drawn that really long line for bitumen bitumen is a really long alkane and it condenses at the very highest temperature at the bottom of the column so what do you think condenses at the very top? Yeah, that's right. What condenses at the top is the shortest alkane, which would be the LPG. And all the others would condense at the temperatures in between. So is there a cheat that we can learn? Well, the two cheats that I would try to, to, to learn is this short, cool, top. Short alkanes condense at the coolest part of the column, which is at the top. And if you can get those three phrases into some kind of sentence, you're going to be picking up marks. And the opposite is true. The long chain alkanes condense at the hottest part of the column, which is at the bottom. And if we look at our fractionating column now, instead of having a mixture of crude oil, we actually have LPG at the top on its own, petrol on its own next etc 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 now that is a very very difficult process and i would suggest that you make some notes i would actually stop i would rewind back to the start of this part and i would watch it again okay so hopefully you've watched the explanation and the description of how fractional distillation works and what i'd like you to do is I'd like you to answer the exam standard. Now I say the exam standard, what that means is this question appears on the exam question all the time. The question says, describe and explain how crude oil is separated. And what we've done is we put together a table of words for you to use. The ones on the left are the easiest words to use. So crude oil, liquid, boiler and vaporize. And it's much more difficult to talk about condensation, the relationship between short and long and top and bottom. So what we'd like you to do, is to write it down on paper or do it on Google Documents and email your answer to your teacher who will mark it for you. 
Take care. Hope everybody's well.